Well, we've gone over quite a few different ways that you could go about making a mash for moonshine. Now, we're finally going to get to making a corn mash that you should enjoy very much. Here we have all the ingredients that we need to make a decent corn mash. First, we have some yellow cornmeal. It doesn't matter what kind of cornmeal, who makes it, doesn't matter. Uh, just some nice yellow cornmeal. White cornmeal might work just as well, too. You'll it's something you'll have to play with and try. This is just something that uh, my local store had. It had, uh, came in two different packages. This one was from a bulk supply that they broke down into smaller packages. This is going to be the base of our corn mash. So next on the list we have some dried fruit mix. We're adding this to the corn just to give us a little extra flavor. And you can, doesn't matter where you get it, doesn't matter what kind you have. This has got a little bit of everything in there. We've got some, uh, we've got some banana, got some golden and uh, regular raisins. There's some papaya. There's some pineapple. I think there's some apricot or dates in there too. So this is going to give us a, a nice extra boost of flavor in our mash. Next we have some ordinary granulated sugar. You can find this anywhere, on any shelf, any store. This just gives us an extra kick to our moonshine. If you don't want to use sugar, you don't have to, but it will give you an extra quantity of drinkable moonshine. Next we have some Red Star Active Dry Yeast. This is just ordinary bread yeast. That's all you need. If you want to use other yeast, you go right ahead and use them. Nothing wrong with them. Turbo yeast is very good. It gets you a high quantity of alcohol in your mash. But uh, this is on any shelf in almost any store. Perfectly okay to use. When you're using grains, the starch needs to be converted to sugar. And then the sugar can be converted into alcohol. Now without malting grains, this cannot be done. So you either need to malt grains or you need some amylase enzyme. So we're going to go with the amylase enzyme because it's a very easy process to do. This came from homebrewstuff.com. I found it to be a very good supply. You only need a little bit. It's very cheap. You can order it online on eBay. It does a very good job. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare the dried fruit. We're going to do that by taking a couple quarts of water and we're going to heat it up. And once the water is heated up, we're going to add the fruit to it and let it simmer just to get all the sugars released. Okay, so now we have a couple quarts of water boiling and now we're just going to add our dried fruit to it. And we're just going to let that simmer for a while and let all them sugars get uh, loosened up. Okay, while our pot on the right here is simmering away with our fruit, the pot on the left is a three gallon stock pot and we have that filled about halfway up with water and then when it gets heated up we're going to add our cornmeal to it. Okay, so now we have our water good and hot. Uh, since our corn is already ground really fine into a powder, uh, this is going to be good enough. It'll get everything released so we're going to add our cornmeal now. We've added the we've added the whole five pound bag. Get it stirred up. Turn the heat back on. Okay, now you see how this is getting really good and thick now? The corn is starting to absorb all the water in there. This is getting really stiff. This is a strainer spoon. 
this is a strainer spoon but as you can see not much is going through it so we'll heat this up just a little bit more okay good and stiff we're not going to take our emulase enzyme we're going to add it to this mix the heat is shut off it's still good and hot we're just going to take the emulase enzyme and we're going to slowly just sift it in there and stir it back up now as you're working this you're going to see that the uh, thickness of this is going to start to change it's going to go from thick to thin again because the starches which are stiff are going to be uh, converted into sugar which is going to be a watery substance okay now we need to keep this not boiling but we just need to keep it hot we're using a thermometer we're keeping it around 150 degrees that's the temperature that Amy Lass works pretty good at okay so now I want you to take a real close look at something before we had a pretty thick substance here with the cornmeal cooked up and now we've added the amylas compound and we've been stirring this for about five to ten minutes and I want you to look at this going back to soupy our starches have broken down and now we are our, our substance is soupy this tells us that we now have converted our starch into sugar now we're going to leave this just like this and let all that amylase enzyme do its job okay so now we have the amylase enzyme in here and it's sat for a good long while and now as you'll notice before I had a very thick substance from all the starch now this substance is soupy very soupy because all the starch has broken down into sugar so now this is ready we're going to add this this is the main part of our mash we're going to put this in a tub and we're going to add a lot of water to it and then we're going to take the liquid from the fruit we're going to take the liquid from the dried fruit and we're going to add that to it and then we're going to add our yeast okay so now we have about three tablespoons maybe four tablespoons of the bread yeast and about an equal amount of sugar and we add some warm water to that and stir it all up let that activate now pour our corn into the bucket we'll give our fruit a good mashing And 
throw that in. We have our activated yeast. We'll throw that in. We'll add a couple more gallons of water to that. Okay, now in the same pan that you just had the uh, cornmeal in, take your sugar, more water, warm water, uh, stir them together. And add to the mix. and cover it up. And there we have some really good bubbling going on there. This is sat for a couple hours. Okay, so now our mash has set for a week. Take a look at it. It stopped bubbling, and we have a lot of stuff that sank to the bottom. A lot of our fruits are still at the top. And as you see, what we have here is uh, a lot of our fruits, like these, uh, these were once raisins but the fermentation has plumped them back up so that's a good indicator that these uh, raisins are now full of alcohol we'll have those squeezed out everything is pretty much sank to the bottom and it's all stopped bubbling we'll have a little taste here very high alcohol content we've done a good job here very good job and this might make a decent beer if you catch it early enough before it stops foaming. Yes. This would make a very good beer. It's almost good as it is. Okay, so now we have to strain this. And the way I'm going to do this is going to be almost like the last time with a little, little upgrade to it. We're going to just do the, ladle this into the uh, soup pot for an extra container, and I got two strainers here. But uh, we're going to have the big strainer. We're going to have a cheesecloth lining the bottom one. That's going to catch all the small particles. And then we're going to put this strainer in the top of it, and that's going to catch all the bigger particles. And instead of pouring it in there, we're just going to get a ladle, and we're just going to slowly ladle everything into there. We're going to get a bigger ladle. Okay, now we've filled up the soup pot to capacity. Now we need to let this drain. fruits and save those.
Okay. Now we'll have to rinse this out and start over. Luckily I have another soup bar. Gonna get another bowl to put this in while we're in between here. There's a whole lot of alcohol in here if you do not squeeze this out like this. Here we have a lump of old corn mash with all the alcohol squeezed out of it. Okay, that's the last bit of our corn. And now we'll squeeze the rest of our juice out of these fruits. Okay, and there's our fruits. Now we'll clean everything up and give it all one final filtration because a lot of corn got through the sift there. Okay, now we're all cleaned up. Okay, now we'll give her one more filtration.
and there we have a nice corn beer ready for distillation or drinking as is.